You've got to meet people where they're at. So I think you can't think about whether you're good or bad at it. It's that you're trying. And that's all that matters. I mean, right. if people are doing their best, I really, truly believe that. Even the worst ones. Yes. We're all just trying the best to do the best with what tools we were given and what tools our parents were given. And, you know, that doesn't excuse wrongful behavior. But I think you've got to give yourself some love. We're trying. Oh, uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Rambo Pro Radio. I am your host, Chatting T, Twitter and Instagram, Action T Five T Three. What's good, everybody? I hope you are doing well. I hope you are having a fantabulous day. I hope you are having a Stupendous night while you're listening to my show that is Me Vita Loca, Me Crazy Life. This week, I heard that clip from the High and Dry podcast, episode number 21, with your your favorite Jason Ellis, Mike Catherwood, and Katie Ellis, and special guest Mike Catherwood's wife, Bianca Kylich. This week, I highly recommend that episode of that podcast if you haven't already subscribed to that show. It is awesome. You're welcome. Whew. Trying. We're all trying. We're all doing the best that we can do with the tools that we have or that we're given at that moment in time, right? So, for me, this week was a, a bit challenging. I had a panic attack. I haven't had a panic attack since I can't remember when, so that's kind of a plus when you can't remember. It's been that long. But nevertheless, it was bad. It was absolutely horrific. So Wednesday nights are already just bad in general for me because I work late. And then... I have to turn right back around and and work a morning shift after working a night shift very close together. It immediately causes me to stress out because I'm freaking out about getting a full night's rest. Um, And so I generally do not. That is the one day of the week that I will, for sure, I will get a minimum of three hours of sleep or less. And that particular Thursday, since I had the panic attack, I got, I checked my sleep timer and I got 10 minutes of sleep that Thursday. On top of that, once I had arisen from waking up, I had to try not to be late to work. And then on top of that, deal with unruly customers. And then on top of that, I had belt testing uh, at class at uh, at Neo Martial Arts. And I know when I go on Thursdays, it's a slight struggle. I will be honest with y'all. <laughs> Maybe that is an understatement. Um... Something having to do with the lack of sleep virtually at my breaking point on a Thursday. I cannot. By Thursday, I'm just... Mirawasha. I'm, I'm out. It's over. It's, it's over, Johnny. It's over. <laughs> I can't hang. I'm, I'm barely hanging on, you know, like, like the song. You just keep me hanging on. It just keep me hanging on. <sighs> Woo. I'm dying. I'm dying on the vine. So, on top of that belt testing, I then decided to add some more riffraff onto my plate by putting more pressure upon myself to get out there more with my DJ gig. Booking a gig once a month 
is a comfort stage and I need to progress to the next stage. Let's try booking a gig every two weeks instead of once a month or maybe every three weeks. I don't know, but once a month is not enough to fulfill my dream. I know this. I know that I need to to put forth an effort. I've put in the effort to practice all the time or as much as I can whenever I get a free moment that I can practice as much as I can, but I'm not putting that same energy to getting out there and booking gigs. So that was onto my plate. On top of that, eBay stuff was on my plate. My numbers overnight, my sales basically went up about 2,000% overnight. And in the last two, three weeks, though I am very appreciative of the business, of y'all buying my stuff, buying my junk, <laughs> it has been overwhelming for one person. Now, would I say that I would hire somebody? No, not quite yet, because this is my baby. I've been doing this for 10 years. I don't trust anybody to do this shit but me. So, I was in full panic mode. Just, I began to just feel my heartbeat. It was like uh, raining blood. It was like that do-do-do. Like, my heart was starting to go like do-do-do. I was like, oh, God, please just go to fuck to sleep. Go the fuck to sleep. Like that nursery rhyme book for kids. Yeah, there's a book. I highly recommend if your child doesn't go to sleep, buy this book. Go the fuck to sleep. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, my heart was like, do, do, do. And I was like, oh, God, please. I just need to, I just need some rest. I don't want to be late to work. I got patched. I got, I got belt testing. I got patch testing. And all of these counter set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of these numbers, and I'm freaking out, and it's like do do do. I'm like, oh god, please, I can feel the like the pressure building. And I'm like, please just go to sleep, please. I tried uh, watching some Netflix, that didn't work. I tried playing the video game for a minute, that didn't work. I tried all of my CBD, I tried all of my sleep remedies, I tried chamomile, lemon balm, passion flower, valerian, melatonin, magnesium, everything, everything, and it was just like, do-do-do, 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 do do I was like, no, no, please, God, and then it just spiraled out of control, I felt like the dude from Filter, there's always these two songs where he screams so loud that he, sometimes he's thrown up at the concert, when he yells, he just goes, So you know it's a serious motherfucker because motherfucker I need to get some sleep. <sighs> God, fucking sucks working double shift, man. God. But this is a sacrifice that I make to get things done, to do what I need to do. This is what I keep telling myself. I gotta do this. But in actuality, I don't need to do this. I don't need to put up with this. This is all garbage. This is all BS. Can we talk about that Wednesday where I don't have to close? It's just not feasible. It's putting my life in danger. I'm falling asleep at work on my feet. I am standing there nodding out at work in the middle of the day. I'm just like, fuck. So I got to go outside in 106 degree weather and, and walk around in a parking lot and collect some carts to wake up because I'm falling asleep. And then by the time that work bill comes along, then I got to go drive in traffic while I'm half asleep to my class and not crash, not kill myself, not kill nobody else. And then to top that off, then I got to go to the class and be present and accounted for. And then trying not to get hurt, which I read in this Why We Sleep book from Dr. Michael Walker, who is the man of many men. You're welcome. Why We Sleep. He talks about how athletes, when they do not get a good night's rest, 
their ability to reason and perform is compromised and they end up getting their chance of injury goes up 80% for every hour less than eight hours of sleep that they get and so I'm getting three hours of sleep minimum Wednesday night Thursday morning ish so when I go to the Thursday class I'm almost at a thousand percent rate guaranteed to get hurt I'm just like waiting for the other shoe to drop I'm like oh god please oh god oh god <sighs> so I'm in full panic mode about that I'm in full panic mode because there is just this weird bizarre vibe going on at work there is this weird this used to be a non-pressured environment where people can shop we're not on a commission shop to your heart is content movie contento <sighs> and now we're forcing people to sign up for this Facebook thing so they can get free groceries for a year and it's just ugh, it makes me feel gross you're trying to establish a connection with a customer so that they even buy anything let alone come back and now you want to be like hey you want to win some free groceries do you have Facebook scan this so my I don't get in trouble scan this badge so I don't get in trouble this is what it's coming down to and I'm like man wait a minute what happened to selling the vitamin part and helping people I didn't sign up for trying to sign up to get people to sign up for Facebook that is some bullshit Facebook in another 20 years is gonna be gone at a obsolete gone hear me when I say this 20 years Facebook will be gone. There will be something else, new and improved, fancy smancy, social media, bopity bop. You're asking me to invest my time and energy into something, into a platform I do not believe in. And the fact that my performance at work hangs on the balance of this? Oh. So, as you can see, my panic attack is very well crafted. <laughs> Because it's the stupid. It's all of this bullshit piling up. And I can't really fucking do anything about it. Or at least I thought I can't do anything about it. Or at that moment in time, my body wanted to do something about it. And I couldn't. And so it caused me to just have severe heart palpitations. I thought I was having a fucking heart attack. I was sweating like a motherfucker. I felt like I was inside of a sauna, but it's not. The part in the sauna, if you've ever cut weight... Uh, for a fight or if you've ever just stayed in the sauna too long like your dear host Ram Oprah um, what starts to happen right before you black out is um, you, your heart you feel your heart beat throughout your whole entire body and the walls start to close and they start to become like rubber and like will flash back and forth and then um, I know this because I experienced it. I made it almost to the other side. I made it to almost blackout stage in the sauna. <laughs> the first fight I ever had. <laughs> Got 15 pounds in like 24 hours. The stupidest thing ever. No food, no water. Just laid up in the sauna. Took naps in there. Worked out. Laid up in the sauna. And stayed in there until the walls started to become rubber and were flashing back and forth and everything in my vision went from color to start going to gray and the and it started shaking it, the the my vision started to become very shaky and i went i better get out of the sun <laughs> i could have fucking died what an idiot this panic attack was like that i felt like the walls were starting to turn they were melting and the color and we're going to gray flashing in and out and I was just sitting in my in the living room like in complete darkness just like sweating like a hookah in church and I thought okay this is it I'm having a heart attack I'm going down um okay well at least I said everything I wanted to say on my podcast People got over 113 episodes that they can enjoy in my time of dying. <laughs> this is it. This is it. 
<laughs> so, raining blood is just going on, and then I really got scared when my my mind, my internal soundtrack switched from Slayer, raining blood, to just flat out a uh, Tool, Rosetta Stoned, because it, it, it was a slow panic. And if you know anything about Tool, these songs just build. It's, it, it's usually it can be at a fast progression and then there's a downturn but a a a progressive a, a progressive an aggressive progressive oh god i can't say this oh god. a progressive aggression with tool and that's why i like it it's just these undertones of of deep-rooted han um and when i say han that is the korean word of just deep deep-rooted in your soul just anger <laughs> I was starting to feel that just boil up in me so here I am sweating like a hook in church my heart is palpitating like crazy it's about to explode out of my chest and then I got tool in my mind and I just hear that god damn she breath free cold eyes red down my mouth they say god damn shit bread and then that Maynard scream I can't remember what they say. <sighs> if you know Rosetta Stone, it's just like it starts off slow and then it just gets about five, six minutes in, then it's just like fast. Whoa, 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 woo, 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 go, go, god damn, shit the bed. And I just kept hearing that over and over again. God damn, shit the bed, god damn, shit the bed. I was like, oh god, I just wanted to fucking stop. I just wanted to fucking stop. I couldn't stand it anymore. I was going fucking insane. I just wanted some peace and quiet. I just wanted to go get some sleep. And my brain would not shut off. I kept worrying over and over. It got work about eBay sales, about booking DJ gigs, all at the same fucking time. Oh, and I got 10 minutes of sleep. And I knew at once my alarm went off, I was just so upset. So upset. I was like, well, I'm going to go to my martial arts class and fail my test. Typical Rambopra. The test failure. <laughs> because I couldn't remember the numbers going to what move I was supposed to do. And it was just when I actually got to the test. Well, I make, made it through work, like I said, made it through work, half asleep on my feet the entire day. Then came home, took a, tried to take a nap, that didn't work, because I was so nervous about the, the test. I was like, well, here we go, going to, going to class with an hour of sleep, not knowing that I had, when I checked it, I'd actually gotten 10 minutes of rest that night. Um... Went to, to do my test. I had no clue how to do uh, the kata they were doing. I had been learning a different kata. And katas are different uh, little moves that you go through to help with uh, balance and, uh, I guess, mental toughness. And, you know, working on your your controlling, controlling your, your, your posture and your movement. Um, and the one that we were being tested on was one that I was not too familiar with, so I was nervous about that. And then, on top of that, then we had to do the jujitsu part, which I'm terrible at. And then on top of that, we had to do the striking part, which I'm somewhat good at when I have some rest. I am terrible at striking when I don't get no sleep. <sighs> I'm already sweating now. Not because I'm a Patty McFatty, but just... Going through the experience of thinking the state of mind that I was at made, is making me nervous now. I was legit scared. I was like, man, I thought I was having a heart attack, y'all. I really, truly thought I was having a heart attack. I just was like, this will not stop. My heart will not stop racing. I'm sweating like crazy. I'm super stressed out. I just want my eBay store to do good. I just want my DJ business to do good. And I'm, I'm feeling all this pressure right now. Normally, I'm pretty good with that. But for some reason, it just all came to a head. And I tried to 
reassure myself that um, all of these things that I'm feeling is just a wave and the wave goes away eventually the wave breaks but it didn't break it was literally eight hours of Gabriel I know we are out there can't remember this we on now damn god damn shit the man we on now out whoa no whoa no oh oh what a fucking nightmare. So anybody listening who suffers from panic attacks, just the worst. Ugh. If you get them more than once in a blue moon, I don't know how you're living right now, fam. I don't know how you do it because I, I mean, I might get them every six months to a year. Is that? <sighs> it, that was rough. It was just like hell. It was never ending hell. It was just nonstop. Emotional uncertainty piled on with physical, the inability to physically calm down. I could not calm down. I couldn't sleep to calm down. I couldn't watch TV to calm down. Couldn't take CBD to calm down. Couldn't take magnesium to calm down. I could not do a, a damn thing to calm down. It's like, oh my god, this is hell. People who suffer from panic attacks daily, oh my god. Oh, how, how, Sway, how, how are you living, how are you living and breathing, if you are, I commend you, that is no joke, that is hell, it was like, if you've watched, uh, Hell Week, with the Navy SEALs on Discovery Channel, it was Hell Week, it was Hell Hours, eight hours, and they have a week of hell, it felt like Hell Week, but it was only eight hours long, I was just like, man, what is this all about, so, me sitting here for the last 20 minutes or so as the words are coming out of my mouth as the words are coming out of my mouth I'm trying to figure out where the fuck is coming from and I guess maybe I'm not trying hard enough or maybe I am trying enough and that I'm just not giving myself enough credit or maybe I need a break I'm not sure but I guess what started it was uh, my eBay sales are doing so good, so now I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop where people just stop buying stuff, and I'm freaking out, and I'm like, okay, how can I pay my bills? And then, same thing with the DJ stuff. Booking gig once a month is comfortable. I'm putting the pressure on myself to, to maybe put myself out there more, and my body's like, no, you can't do that. No, no, uh, no, don't do that. And the pressure on myself to being a, a better martial artist like that, <sighs> That shakes me to the core because for a long time that's been my identity. Fighting has been my identity. Long before I even fought in the ring. If you listen to my show, then you know. If you are a new listener, if you've just discovered my show, the first fight I ever had when I was seven years old. From the age of seven to the age of ten years old. I got my ass kicked a lot, a lot at school. At that time, between the ages of seven and ten, Certain individuals saw me as a weak individual and would pick on me, would pick fights with me, would beat me up. From the age of seven or one, from seven to I'm 35 years old, I've been fighting. For the last three years, it's been a complete restructuring of my fight DNA, where I'm trying to learn the, the, the core of mixed martial arts and not just we're fighting to fight to protect myself, which that is important because, hello, <laughs> look at what happened the other day. Some weirdo pulled a knife out on me, yada yada. Um, it's important to know how to protect yourself, but um, also the foundations of why you're doing this is important. And see, for me, I didn't understand the why. I'm trying to teach, I'm trying to learn the why. Why is this move important? Why do I need to hold my foot this way? Why do I need to uh, keep my wrist straight and not bend my wrist when I throw a punch? Why do I need to, uh, when I'm on the ground, bring my, my uh, arm out to post to, to get out from underneath somebody if they're trying to choke me from the front, if we're on the ground? Just 
the essentials, the core basics of different moves. I, I feel like that's been my recent journey and less of just fighting to fight. But, of course, having a lack of sleep. I know that was a long sidebar. Sorry, guys. Um, having the lack of sleep caused me to go back and revert into that we're fighting just to fight mode. And God bless Eric for putting up with my crap. Um, and when it comes to fighting, it's not that somebody's getting the better of the exchanges. Is that there are certain rules of combat. And so when I feel like um, there are certain things that are to be followed and adhered to, they're important. They're for our safety. And so when you get somebody like myself who has not had a whole lot of sleep, who is not doing their best at that moment in time, who is lacking the ability to reason, I can't follow the rules. I cannot be trusted to keep the gay rage away. And of course, in the sparring, a pinch. Not as bad as what happened before with uh, Morgan's sister. I can't remember her name, but forgive me. I, I mean, I literally kicked the girl so hard she almost blew out her ACL. Um, that was a full... I completely blacked out. That was like... That was gay rage to the nth degree. This time, it was a smidge of it. And uh, Sensei Jesse caught it and broke it up quickly so it didn't really get to that point I didn't feel that I felt like I was still somewhat present but of course he's observing it from the outside so he saw it and felt like it was going to a not so good place so he broke that up so uh, not having the correct amount of sleep I just lack the ability to reason and be a good person it just it gives me the gay rage I'm telling you guys I'm just not at my best. All of those things that I'm thinking about, I I kind of forgot that Rebel 8 podcast that we talked about a couple of months back where you don't need to stress out. If you just stop for a second and think about what exactly you're stressing out, prioritize. So I was stressing out about getting to work on time. Well, it's real easy. Go to bed early enough, which I can't to get some sleep so I wake up on early enough or wake up on time to get to work I can't so that option is out the window so we know we're going to be late okay fine step number two if it's business related like eBay like DJing you don't get the right to stress out about it if you haven't done everything you possibly can and I think that's why I was having a panic attack because my body was telling me I'm not doing everything that I can to get this get this stuff moving to keep this train rolling and I noticed now my eBay sales are starting to slow down again and I'm like oh see this is what I was worried about well actually it's coming true because I'm not doing the things that I'm mean, needing to do did I blast it on social media did I tell some friends did I um did I check and see if maybe I can my prices are too high and I can lower it Am I doing all of the things that I need to do? Am I posting things? Knowing what I know, all the advice that's been given to me about my eBay store is that how eBay works is in order to get popularity, you just have to keep posting. The more you post, the more popular you are. So, and I haven't posted in three weeks. So how do I expect my sales to go up if I haven't posted in three weeks? So the ball is in my court. I don't get the right to panic about something that I'm not doing. So, knowing that, sitting down and evaluating that panic attack, I had no business having that panic attack. I didn't earn the right to have that panic attack. I didn't, I didn't promote my eBay store. I haven't promoted my DJ stuff because I'm trying to buy equipment. So I've been kind of on the, the edge for that. Even though... Shockingly, the equipment I do have, everybody says it's loud enough, but I don't have a microphone, so I need to get a microphone. But regardless of that, once I put together those pieces, then it's like all systems go. But in the meantime, what else could I be doing to promote myself as a DJ? I can publish my tracks. 
on tracks that I've been sitting on since January. What kind of mental patient am I where I'm not publishing my tracks? So how can the word get around for people to book me if I don't publish my shit? How can people listen to my music if I don't publish my shit? So I do not get the right to have that public, that panic attack. I did not earn the right to have that panic attack. No reason whatsoever. I should not have had that panic attack. I'm embarrassed I had that panic attack. I'm embarrassed I let my emotions take control of my entire being. I can learn from that experience and know that, God forbid, if that motherfucker happens again, that panic attack comes back and be like, uh-uh, no. Whoa, whoa, no, no, whoa, whoa, no, no, goddamn shit, bad. No, actually, you don't. You don't get the right to shit the bed. Exhausted all avenues. Have you posted on social media? Have you told your friends? Have you told your business partner? Or whatever's going on. Have you done everything you possibly can do? Have you exhausted every avenue? Then you get the right to have a panic attack. Panic attack's not good. But if you do have one, or you are stressed out, just... Just know that you need to exhaust every avenue first. It's a business. You need to promote word of mouth, social media, email, email blast, whatever. Make more posting. Take pictures. That's how the business grows. I had to break through that wall. And once I was on that, once the panic attack went away, and I'm on the other side of that wall, I now see like, oh man, that was stupid. Oh man, what a waste of time. The time I wasted having a panic attack, I, I should have went straight to the computer and posted some more stuff on eBay. I should have went straight to the computer and answered emails. Even though it's late at night, you shouldn't do that. But if that was really on my mind, I should have just did that. I should have put in that energy to taking care of that. Now I know. 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 So, now that that panic attack is over, the next day, I had to do some eBay shopping. I went to the DC Shuko Warehouse. And if you know anything about DCs and skateboarding, piece of skateboard history, DC shoes plays a role in and DC Shoes has been something that I've skateboarded with since 1995. So you're talking about the, the beginning stages of DC Shoe Co. Revolution. And I'm sure you listening, you may or may not have bought in a pair. And in, in your life, in your time of, uh, you know, being the cool kid at school to actually skateboarding or you just thought they looked cool, so you bought them. Um... There has been this evolution with DC Shoes that unfortunately has kind of strayed away from skateboarding, I'm sad to say. Now, as of late, the last few years, or every now and then, they've been re-releasing old style shoes. They've been re-releasing the old shoes. And so all of us OGs in the game, we've been buying them up, so they've been getting sales. So... I got lucky last time I went to the warehouse and I found some some OG DCs there, some OG Josh Kalis shoes. And if you know, Josh Kalis is one of the designers of DCs, who is also a skateboarder, well sponsored by them. And he's got his Kalis model, which is badass. A lot of history. Skating at Love Park, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which now I believe closed down. RIP Love Park. Um, but his shoe design is incredible and when he designs shoes you want to get your hands on them so I got my my hands on some Josh Kelly's shoes so I thought man that was such a good find last time let me go back again so they open up their warehouse to the public and they let you buy things I went down there mind you this is an hour drive from my house and then two hours drive back in traffic. I went down there to look at these shoes, and it was the worst fucking shoes I've ever seen in my life. How dare you, DC? No! No, sir! Terrible. I was just 
beside myself. I said, oh my God, this is a bust. This is a fucking bust. How am I going to put something in my eBay store? This is trash. They had literally taken the regular DC shoes and then put a van sole on them. They all had this, what they call a vulcanized sole, which is flat. And uncomfortable. It's just not comfortable. I couldn't in good faith. I wanted to buy these shoes. And I couldn't in good conscience sell these in my eBay store because it was crap. I knew it was crap. And my customers are not going to buy the crap. Sorry, it's just not going to happen. So they had these boop, these weird DC Vans knockoffs. And I was just like, ugh, this is no good. And then I was talking to some people afterwards, and they're like, oh, well, I like Vans. And I said, yes. See, see there? You like Vans. You like DC. But they're two separate shoe companies. You wouldn't want them merged together. There's a reason why people buy Vans, and there's a reason why people buy DC. And most of the people are not going to come into the middle and get a Vans DC shoe. They're either going to buy Vans or DC. That's it. So the fact that some ding-dong at DC, a higher-up at DC, thought that this was a great idea to merge the two styles, it was a miss. It was complete dog shit. Dog piss Willie. I was so pissed. I said, like, man, no wonder these are here at this warehouse sale because they couldn't sell them. You gotta understand, when I go to these warehouses and I'm buying stuff, most of it is stuff that companies either overordered and they could not sell, or they are in pure desperation to get rid of the stuff because there is another shipment of new stuff coming in for the next season and they gotta move it quick. So, I was just like, oh, damn. No wonder you're trying to move these shoes. No wonder. They're ugly as hell. And they're not comfortable. So I was truly disappointed. And I was like, man. <sighs> I was bummed out. So I had to heal myself. I had to heal my soul. I made a trip to the Cali Tacos. Trip to the Cali Tacos. Uh, the best Mexican food in town. You're welcome. Cali Tacos. If you're ever at Angel Stadium... They are probably four or six blocks south of Angel Stadium. I highly recommend. And make sure you go early because there is a line out the door. There's a tiny hole in the wall Mexican joint. There is literally three tables in there um, with two chairs each. And then after that, you're on your fucking own. <laughs> Cali Tacos, they don't give a fuck. So, um... Brush up on your Spanish, because sometimes they're in a mood and they will only call out your order in Spanish, and you got to figure it the fuck out. Uh, but I used to get the uh, Cali, it's the Angel Burrito now, they changed it. It used to be the Fries Taco Burrito, where they, or it was Fries Taco Burrito, Fries Taco Quesadilla Burrito. So they would just wrap Fries Taco Quesadilla in a big foot-long burrito with beans, cheese, rice. You can get double meat if you want. Shrimp, steak, chicken, whatever. Guacamole, pico de gallo. And then they make their own special spicy sauce. Oh, my God. Oh, my days. Cali tacos. It's the shit. I dare you to change my mind. <laughs> Best Mexican food, hands down. Worth the hour drive. So when I was upset about your eBay stuff not going good, I was like, let me go over to Cali Tacos and heal myself. <laughs> I had to level up, level up, level up, level up, level up, level up. Um, dang. Then I ran into Boom Shakalaka, customer of the week. I ran into Boom Shakalaka, came into the store, and oh my days. Complete change of attitude. Went from being a complete asshole to actually saying, hello, how are you? So I'm working and I see this man come up to me and I notice, I didn't notice right away, but then I went, oh no, it's Boom Shakalaka. Here we go. I'm walking and then he goes, mm, oh. hello, hello, how are you today? And I was like, oh. Hello, sir. I am doing just fine. Hello, good sir. How are you doing today? Good, marvelous, wonderful, splendid. How are you, Mr. Boom Shakalaka? 
This motherfucker ran. <laughs> I was like, oh, and how are you today, good sir? Doing fine, I suppose. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. What, what was that, sir? What was that, good sir? Speak up, chap. I can't hear you. What'd you say? Boom, boom, boom. Boom, shakalaka. <laughs> Man, I don't... I'm not sure. It may be he has Tourette. I just don't understand where you would go into a situation, a conversation, where you're speaking to somebody that you don't know, a complete stranger, and then you throw in a boom shakalaka. I don't... I'm trying to... Where is... Where do you... <laughs> Boom shakalaka. Oh, but this time it was more polite. It wasn't a rude boom shakalaka. It was a hello, uh, I don't want to fight with you. I'm just going to buy my vitamins. Boom shakalaka. I was like, oh, thank God. I don't want to fight with you either, sir. I just want to sell you the vitamins and you go about your business. Minus the boom shakalaka part, okay? So, after boom shakalaka left, I was I was pleasantly surprised. I said, "There, you see, sir. You see what it takes when somebody finally has the the yarbles, the the hum to tell you that you're acting like a dick, and you need to tighten it up. You need to straighten it up, sir. You need to uh, ix the ax the boom shakalaka and just be a a good person. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Just." Say hello, good morning, goodbye. Where's my vitamins? Thank you. Have a nice day. Easy. Easy as pie. Now I've got to. I've got to. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's been a long time. You've gotten a bereavement. But I'm telling you, my two lady listeners, <laughs> joke off. We're fucking talking about sports. <laughs> my Manchester United is back. We're back, baby. We're back. We got, we got the PL. We got the EPL back. It has been, let's see, the season ended in May. The first, no, the second or third week in May. And then now, the, the we're into the second week of August. Second, third week of August. And the EPL is back, and I'm so happy. I've got my English football back. The Premier League is back on. Or as you Americans like to call it, soccer. Football is back. My club is back. I'm so happy. The boys are playing like they should. We got some new signings. We got Daniel James from Wales. And we got Harry Maguire. And hope to God we do not lose Paul Pogba. We ditched that terrible Lukaku. Oh, oh my God. Boy, oh boy. What just, oh, what a sore. An absolute... I think we paid the 70 to 80 million pounds for Lukaku. What a bust. Played very well at Everton and then shit the bed. God damn, shit the bed. <laughs> shit the bed at Man United. Thank you, James Maynard. <laughs> uh, I know, I'm overly talking the tool. Sidebar, I'm overly talking the tool today because we need to, we need to gas up the tool streams because... At the end of the month, new Tool album is coming, and we need to show Tool that we are greatly appreciative of them putting their full catalog on, on all streaming platforms. And so we need to show them that this is important. We love our Tool. We are very proud, and we appreciate you. So we need you to stream the fuck out of Tool on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, whatever the fuck you listen to, Pandora, whatever, I don't fucking know. Just listen to the tool for the next month, okay? Thank you. I'll be playing it on here. You're welcome. My United boys are back. The boys are back. The boys are back. The boys are back, and... What has been extremely painful the last season, full of heartache, a terrible coach, terrible owners, terrible football management. It was making me long for the days of Sir Alex Ferguson. 
I guess I should lose my English accent while I was talking about football. Um, but nevertheless, we have now got a wonderful manager and by the name of former United Manchester United player, former United player, Uli Solskjaer. Um, whew, I've never been so happy to have uh, uh, him in charge because... Ole, 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 ole. He has brought a bright light to the club. The club was very downtrodden. The players were just in absolute shambles. And we all know about Manchester United management. It is fucking terrible. In case you didn't know, the Glazer family, an American family, owns Manchester United. But they own a terrible team known as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And unfortunately, what happens with a lot of these clubs is they acquire a debt. And then somebody with a very large pocketbook writes a check and buys the company or buys the team. Hence, the Glazers. The Glazers bought Manchester United, which has been somewhat of a profitable thing for them. However, they don't know how to run a football club. They don't. They've hired this chaboni named Ed Woodward who has been there for some time, but he's gotten lucky. In the uh, span of Edwards' tenure at Manchester United, we've had the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Gareth Bale, Giggs, uh, Paul Scholes, um, Gary and, and, and Aaron Neville. We've had an incredible... We've had Ole Solskjaer. We've had incredible players, legendary players. Um, but it was just timing. And so Ed has been resting on his laurels. And now he's been crumbs. I mean, we couldn't even sign a bloody... We need another striker. We need a bloody striker. We need somebody who can be creative. And Popa wants out. Popa wants out. And guess what? They might sell Popa for £160 million. But we need him. He is the only creative player we have left he creates these goals for us to score and it was no exception today Sunday where he was setting up goals and getting the likes of Marcus Rashford in there Anthony Martial and of course our newly signed Daniel James from Wales oh glory glory man united glory glory man united Having to be at work when the game is on is very painful, but my lunch break, I got to watch the second half, and I was screaming! I was getting stuck! I'm so happy after having the best worst season last year to now, where I feel like the future is so bright. The boys are happy to play. Ola, o, Ole is, is happy to coach and we need a striker and I feel like if we play good with the next between now and the next there's a January transfer window I feel like we could acquire a very good striker if we play well but we have to play good till January and that's such a fucking long time <sighs> anyway enough about my Manchester United I love them dearly I I was jumping up and down, shaking my car, posting on Instagram ridiculous things, yelling at my friends. Oh, it feels so good to be in the winner's circle again. Uh, shout out to the Reds. You guys have done a wonderful job today, and I hope it is a repeat. And we can make a title contention this year. It's been a long road without Sir Alex. We're so used to winning. Since Sir Alex was the coach of the club back in the early... 80s, the early 80s, uh, late 80s, early 90s, we were winning all the time. We won all the time. And then it's been about four or five years since Sir Alex has left, and it's been torturous. It's been painstakingly terrible finishing fourth place, fifth place, sixth place. It's unacceptable. We are a top tier club. We deserve to be number one. We are number one. We're Manchester United. Come on, get your stuff, motherfuckers! Reds! Red Devils! Alright, that's enough of that.
I'm sure my lady listeners are squawking in my email box. It's All right. So now that we're done talking about sports, let's talk about soap current events. And all of my lady listeners will love this. Maybe not my guy listeners, but Miley Cyrus splits up with the husband. Liam Hemsworth. Yo, we're just married for like a year or something, right? But this is the thing. Normally, I don't care about this shit. I don't care about this shit. Seriously, I don't. The, what was in the paper today was that Miley had just broken up with her husband like the night before or two days before and then is on a boat on the, off the coast of Italy or some shit with Brody Jenner ex-wife who they just broke up last week and they're, pitch, they're taking pictures of them on a boat and they're making out and I say to myself I'm like oh it makes me uncomfortable because I don't, it's none of my business. She's a public figure. I get it. So there is going to be some scrutiny from her. She has always said that she is not in love with a certain gender or whatever. And that's fine. That's on her. I guess the part that bothers me is I'm not sure if. I'm. I'm my hope is that she is not using this gay platform to either sell records or to just have her name out in the press and so she's on this boat making out with this girl in public I I know that in the past she dated a I believe she dated a Victoria she dated a Victoria's Secret model that's with Kristen Stewart so they dated for a long time it was real I think but I guess when I see it's weird for me when I see celebrities when they go with both sides. I don't know why that bothers me, but I just, I don't know. I just don't want, I don't want nothing to be, my gay family is important to me. That's my tribe. And so I feel like my snout is out when people use that to some sort of advantage. I just don't, I don't know. I hope that's not what's going on here. I'm hoping she's just not using this to get clicks. That if this is her relationship, then cool, do your thing, make out with girl, get married to a lady, or not, or get back with them, it comes with again. Who cares? It's none of my business, right? Am I crazy? But it just, it just kind of bugs me. I just, I want to believe it's genuine. I just don't like it when people, because there's been people in the past who are just like, ooh, it's not just celebrities. There's been, I've been around it. There have, I'm at the club. I see girls make out with other girls just to use that as some sort of advantage that they're not actually gay really but they're just trying to stir up attention and that makes me ill Ugh. it makes me nauseous because it's like they're treating something that is my life as like a joke like it's a cutesy thing or they could just it's a switch you can turn it on and off and do whatever you want and, and there's no repercussions but it's like for the rest of us gay motherfuckers it's real we can't even go to some places in the United States or let alone out of the country in some places in fear of being gay bashed. It's a real deal. It's serious. It's my life. For the rest of us, it's our life. So when I see straight women, and I'll use that in air quotes because Miley has said that she is not. So, okay. But when I see straight women who try and use that as an advantage will like make out with their friend or whatever, it... It's ugh, it does not sit well with my soul. <laughs> it gives me the gay rage. <laughs> oh damn it! I just I'm like oh, why are you doing that? You're using this to get attention. You're using this to get men to look at you. Are you using this to get gay ladies to look at you? That's another thing. There are a lot of people on this dating app monkey business that are like pretending to be gay so they'll get other gay ladies to take care of them because they're not getting attention from their boyfriend oh this is just a nightmare it's just a fucking nightmare can anybody be genuine anymore please <laughs> anywho I just I wasn't going to talk about it but it kind of irked me I was just like ooh here she is making out with somebody else's ex-wife or whatever and she's an ex-wife herself or what's going on these two are making out in public 
and just two days ago she was married to a man both of these women like <laughs> just two days ago they were married to men and now they're making out with each other on a boat i don't understand i don't understand and maybe it's not meant for me to understand here we are talking about uh, dongs and as you know your dear host rambo does not do the dong the dong 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 i don't i don't do that i don't i don't i hey put your put your put your piece away okay god damn it i don't do the dongs all right no disrespect to those who do. I don't. So, this week, there was a lot of dong news going on. So, I have to tell y'all about it because most of my listeners have dongs. <laughs> and you need to know what's going on with your dong, da dong, dong, dong. Uh, a man in England has an erection for two weeks after injecting a mysterious drug into his penis. It might have to have it amputated. <laughs> Oh my god. First of all, why are you sticking things in your duel? Duel. Duel is an Arabic word for penis. Why are you sticking things in your duel that you don't know about? Why would you inject drugs into your into your chrome? What's wrong with you? Man, bruh, you deserve to lose it at this point. You sticking things in there you don't know about? This is precious. God has bestowed upon you Satan, God, Buddha, the universe, the witches of Eastwick, whatever the fuck you believe in, has bestowed upon you the great uh, gift of having a penis, having a duel, as what they say in, 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 per, in Persian, to do tala, which is the golden penis. You got it. You've been given this, you've been given the right to give life. You hold life in your hum. You can pee standing up. You can jack off. Which, there was a lot going off this weekend in, in the social persuasions. <laughs> the friend kept playing the jacking off to you girl song way too fucking much for my liking. I'd like to leave that song back in 2007. <laughs> Jacking off the you girl I even used to have some times <laughs> God, if you don't know the Jacking off the you girl song Please go to YouTube <laughs> I think I look at your Facebook pics I'm jacking off the you girl <laughs> Please, for the love of God If you haven't seen that Please go watch the Jacking off the you girl uh, You're welcome Thank me later So this man has been granted the birthright of having a kram, and he abuses it. He puts, he injects something into his matus, and now the doctors don't, the doctors don't know if they're going to be able to save it. It has been erect for two weeks, and they don't know how to get it to go back down, and so they might have to cut it off in fear of it might getting septic. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Then I had to hear about, uh, I was listening to Stern Show while I was on my little road trip to the DC warehouse, and they were talking about guys with Peroni's disease, and Peroni's disease is where you basically break your, your duel. You're having, you're having a sexy time, and, uh, you do the one, one pump chump, and... If the lady, she is a shift, and the duel, the penis, goes back in, if you if you pull and thrust back in real quick, and you hit the lady pelvic bone, and hear a pop, oh, mm, dirty pop, dirty pop, mm, pop. <laughs> oh my god, I shouldn't laugh, but it's fucking serious, you broke your dick, son, you shit's broke, fam. Uh, if you hear a pop down there, you need to go to a doctor ASAP. And so this guy called up the Stern Show and said that he heard a mm, pop. Uh, <laughs> dirty pop. Dirty pop. Uh, he, he heard a pop, but didn't do anything about it for months until one day he woke up and his duel was at a 90 degree angle. Shit's bent up, pointing straight at it. What? The fuck, bitch? And he said, that he has broken his duel so bad that the blood has calcified in there and now has to get injections from a doctor weekly to have the blood deposits 
dissolved. And if he doesn't do it, then, then he's going to have to have surgery and they're going to have to cut off some of it to get the calcium out. Oh! Dirty pop. But, oh my God, I don't even have a duel and I'm crying for this guy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh. You gotta get weekly shots to dissolve the, the calcium in the dick. Oh. <laughs> the doctor told him that it's not even gonna fix his, his duel completely. He has to have surgery and that uh, they're gonna bend it back down, but it's not gonna be bent back down all the way. It's not gonna go back to the bent that he used to have. It's still gonna be kind of bent up, which is hella fucked up, fam. I'm worried about y'all. Y'all are getting too vigorous out there and breaking your dicks. <laughs> Please, for the love of God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. And the first guy I told you about who injected some mysterious uh, medicine into his dick did not go to the doctor right away. And instead, he put a wine koozie on his junk and kept on partying. Oh, Dirty pop. an idiot. You are stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. And then finally, this is it for the duel. We're done with the duel to lot. <laughs> the duel to lot. <laughs> man went into a hospital to get Botox and came out circumcised. <laughs> Dirty pop. I'm a gay lady. I've never talked about so much duel in my life. <laughs> oh, oh my God. How in the fuck? This guy's medical information got mixed up and they circumcised him instead of giving him Botox. And he didn't know until after he woke up and his joke was mangled. <laughs> I gave this guy $24,000. No. Me gotta sue you for a lot more than $24,000. That ain't emotional uh, duress. We're talking a milli. A milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli. You better pay me a milli if you're gonna cut off my junk, accidentally cut off my junk. That's terrible. Oh my god. Ugh. Whew. That's enough with the duel. I've had it. I'm gonna have nightmares about penis. <laughs> This just in, breaking news. I just got done talking to one of my homegirls at the girl at the rock show. Girl in love with the girl at the rock show. She said one, and I told her that I didn't know. One of my favorite Blink-182 songs. She has just informed us, the listeners of Ramble Radio. This just in, this just in, breaking news. There is a Taco Bell hotel. Holy shit, I did not know this. How come y'all didn't say something to me? Listen, I am obsessed with Taco Bell. However, this is, this is the, how, the level of obsession. It's only, there is only two things that I buy at Taco Bell. It is the nacho fries and it is the Baja Blast Freeze. Those are the only two things that I will get at Taco Bell because A, when you drink the Baja Blast, the Baja Blast Freeze, it cools you down after a workout. Plus, you get a little caffeine, so it gives you some energy. Or you can have it before a workout and give you that energy. I guess you want to go. So, what the fuck? I need to go stay at Taco Bell Hotel and give me some unlimited Baja Blast Freeze. Now, the rest of the food is terrible. I'm sorry, Taco Bell, but sorry, not sorry. It is the worst. I know Mexican food. That is shit. That is dog piss, really. I cannot condone that behavior. But that Baja Blast Freeze y'all got. And no seasoned nacho fries you got. Yes. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I have been told by the girl at the Rock Show there is a Taco Bell Hotel. It is in Palm Springs. And we need to go. I need to spend the night at the Taco Bell Hotel. This is very important. What is uh, yes, I need to go. There is a Baja Bar. I need to go to the Taco Bell Hotel in Palm Springs. It's very important. I will be setting that up soon. I will be looking into that. I will be investigating the Taco Bell Hotel. Give me all the Baja Blast you got. One thing that just really 
pissed me off completely and I just am beside myself with this and then I will say au revoir this week out of the blue California Recycling Center Replanet Company has closed its doors all 300 stores across the state of California are gone without a warning closed the doors laid off 750 people and the 300 stores are gone so how in the hell are y'all supposed to recycle and get your refund back I have been recycling cans and bottles and glass since 2008 and we're talking big bags I collect bags at my work I'll get bags from the gym I'll get bags from my neighbor I used that money that I got back to pay my medical bills I had over $80,000 worth of medical bills from my, my two surgeries how and I, at the time I had terrible insurance because I was skimping on it because I was trying to save money because at the time I was living with my ex and trying to do my own thing and, and living on my own and paying rent and living in a very nice uh, house in Redlands and was enjoying my life and then I got sick and they had shitty insurance and they didn't pay for not a damn thing so 80k had to come up with the money 80k and so recycling saved me recycling saved me who paid my bills recycling helped me get gas money when I didn't have I didn't have any money recycling helped me get food when I didn't have any money for food and I don't want to ask anybody for anything because that's not my personality I just gotta find a way I just gotta get it done so recycling was my go to and so now that all of the recycling centers are closed and when I say all oh, I drove to about four of these motherfuckers on Friday and they're all gone all gone how does the state of California get to charge you CRV when there is no place to redeem that CRV? Hey, you jackass. Hey, asshole. Hey there, asshole. Hey there, asshole. I'm talking to you. You can't charge California CRV and they don't have a place to get their redemption money back. That's the whole point of the recycling center. And so because of our dealings with China, and this is no disrespect this is not me being racist or whatever it just so happens that a lot of our recycled materials end up in china or the ocean and so thank god china has been gracious enough to take our recycled materials and make things out of them whatever or throw them in the water themselves whatever but in the last two years the price of aluminum because of the oversaturation in the market with china has gone down 40% and plastic has been worth virtually nothing. So now we came to the point where the Chinese say, hasta la pasta, we no money no more recycling, we're done. And so the recycling company is forced to close. So now I got a garage full of bottles and nothing, nowhere to fucking put them, no place to take them. And I am upset. I'm so upset with the system. If you are going to charge CRV, then you need to have a recycling place. Period. Point blank. This should be state-sanctioned recycling places. This shouldn't be private companies. These should be state-sanctioned areas where you should go to recycle your goods and get money back. Y'all want to keep this shit out of the ocean or not? What are we doing, fam? So you're telling me you want us to litter? What the fuck is this? What are we doing? I'm just, I'm, oh, God. Irritated. Absolutely irritated. Gassed up. Not in a good way. Because of the brokenness of the system. For the system allowing us to do, make this deal with China. And China holding all of the keys. And they're like, today's the day. We no longer want your shit. Goodbye. Close the door. You deal with it. It's like, what the fuck? We're all screwed now. If you live in the state of California and you listen to this. Where are you supposed to recycle your stuff? And get your money back. Let me know. Your, your dear host, Ramble for Radio, wants to know where is the nearest fucking recycling place? Because I would like to know so I can take my fucking bottle. And on that note, 
and must run. It is terribly late to his business hours in London. The announcement for Ellis Mania has been made. It looks like it is going to be Halloween weekend. Halloween is a Thursday. Ellis Mania would be a Friday show. And then they fight Saturday night. Your dear host, Rambo Bra, is now going to start training very fucking hard and getting ready for these Ellis Mania fights. I am excited. Ellis Mania 19 will be taking place in Austin. I'm not sure. I believe it's at Stubbs. Which, if you know Stubbs, Stubbs is an incredible building where, uh, you know, the likes of the Rolling Stones have played. Matis Yahoo has recorded. Live at Stubbs. Go listen to Matis Yahoo live at Stubbs. Best album ever. Um, Ellis Mania is approaching, which means all y'all motherfuckers who aren't in shape, if this is the time now to get in shape. It is going to be November 1st, 2019. So let's get motherfucking moving. If you're planning on doing a fight, submit your information to Ellis. Let's get the ball rolling. No slacking. No no hanging on. No nothing. Let's get this shit on the road. Let's get the show on the road. Let's find out who we're fighting so we know what to train for. All that jazz. Or better yet, fuck that. Get your shit together. Get in shape. So when Ellis asks for the emails, or Ellis asks for your fight tapes or your submissions, please Send them in accordingly. I don't want to hear from nobody be like, I'm not in shape enough. I'm not good enough. No. Listen. There's only going to be so many of these Ellis Manias left. And I know y'all ain't trying to fight me, but just in case you are, whether you're in shape or not, it's about your heart. September, October, November. You have three months from now to start training like a complete crazy person. Two a days if you, if you need to to get in shape and get into that ring. Let's go, everybody. Let's go, Ellis family. Let's wolf knives. Let's get it. Let's get to motherfucking Austin. November 1st, Ellis Mania 19. And on that note, please like, share, and subscribe to Rambo Radio, RamboFradio.com. Tell your friends, but only if they're cool. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you motherfuckers who listen to this show, who put up with my bullshit, who tolerate my gay rage, and still manage to chat with me, and still manage to listen to this filth. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day that they listened to the show, and I said, oh, my condolences. <laughs> because it is just... It is... Me vida loca is crazy. Sometimes it's not always pretty. It's crazy. Shit hits the fan a lot. Um, sometimes I cry. Sometimes I get the gay rage. Uh, sometimes, um, sometimes I'm awesome. But you get to experience all of those things in a, in a wide range. You get to experience the sounds of Rambo Bra. And on that note, I'm turning this fucking thing off. Because if I don't, I will be here all night. And I guess I have to go to work in like four hours or whatever the fuck. But thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you motherfuckers who like, share, and subscribe. And listen to my show. Ramble for Radio. Ramble for Radio.com. Lipson. Ramble for Radio. Lipson. Wait. Ramble for Radio. Dot Lipson. Dot com. For past episodes. They're all there. iTunes. Ramble for Radio. Dot com. Whatever the fuck. If you like to click around and look at videos of me punch people and shit. Uh, there's no new ones up there, but the, we'll take you to something. I don't know. You'll get to my YouTube page and you'll fall into the abyss that is my life. <laughs> whatever. Do whatever you want. Just listen to my show. Because that helps me. That helps me. Help me help you. Help me. <laughs> this is Rambo for Radio. I'm out. <laughs>